Okay, we've all heard so much about the Bronco and how awesome it is off-road, but I found a super secret Easter egg inside this rig. Now, I'm not gonna tell you where it is, but I will say that it's a latitude and longitude point, and it just happens to be right in my backyard. So I got my adventure pants on, my adventure boots on, let's go find it. So I could put this point in the GPS, but like, where's the fun in that? I'm gonna use a paper map. So uh, let me get my wisdom glasses on and plot this bad boy here on the map. Now, if you guys can figure out where this is just based off of this map, then good for you. Okay, so I know I'm here somewhere just because I'm cool and I know that. And then this is a transmission line road, which I can actually see out there already. I don't see any roads that actually go up to that point. So I guess we'll see what happens when we get there. It is right on top of that peak. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, it can be so high. Well, while we're going up here, I might as well tell you a little bit about this Bronco. So this is the top wild track spec. It's gonna start at right around $48,500, but that includes the Sasquatch package, and it also includes $1,500 or so for delivery. Now with that Sassy package, you get 35 inch mud terrain tires directly from the factory, and those are wrapped around 17 inch beadlock capable wheels. Now I'm saying capable because they're not actual beadlock wheels. Beadlock wheels live in kind of this weird gray space according to the DOT, so you know, you're not gonna get them directly from the factory. Uh, you've also got a 4.7 final drive, two inch wider track, fender flares, and of course those longer travel Bilstein shocks. Now, are you gonna get longer travel Bilstein shocks when we get the Bronco Raptor? I mean, probably, and I'm kind of excited for that. All right, so it's pretty good in the whoops, but what I'm on right now is this chatter that's left by side by side. So let's see how we go here. Baja mode, woo, not bad. 45, 45 miles an hour. Feeling pretty good here. And uh, oh, here we go. Woo! <laughs> I don't know how much air that was. <laughs> but that was fun. <laughs> Now the first thing you need when you go off-roading, of course, is tires. We got these 35, so check. The next thing you're gonna need is clearance. Well, this Bronco's got 11.5 inches of ground clearance with skid plating all the way around. So I'm not even really worried about any of these rocks that I'm encountering. The next thing you're gonna need is geometry. This little two-door here shines. 43.2 degrees of approach angle, 37.2 degrees of departure angle, and 29 degrees of breakover angle. Now, when you look at the four-door, that's 26.3 degrees of breakover angle. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but three degrees can mean the difference between getting stuck and not getting stuck. Plus, with this short little wheelbase, I mean, I've just, it's easier to turn. It's just more nimble all the way around. So I am full on team two door. Now is getting in the back seat suck? I mean, yeah, it's pretty bad. And in fact, if this were mine, I'd probably just delete the rear seat altogether and just use it for storage. But having that extra capability really helps. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is crawl ratio. So this Bronco with a 10 speed automatic, I have a crawl ratio of 67.8 to one. Now, those of you who are Jeep fanatics, you might say, hey, that's less than the Wrangler at 77.2. And you know what? You're right. But remember that ratio is just a representation of how much the torque is multiplied before it hits the ground. And in this 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, I've got 330 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque, assuming I'm using premium fuel. So I'm starting with more torque to begin with, right? I mean, the 3.6 liter Wrangler, 260 pound feet of torque. Even the two liter Wrangler is 295 pound feet of torque. So once you do all the math, this is gonna come out on top. Unless, of course, that is you go with the Wrangler 4xe, the plug-in hybrid, that has 470 pound-feet of torque. Now that's more than this, but remember you only get that when you have all of the electrons in the battery. Otherwise, you're just dealing with the same amount of torque that you've got in the two liter turbo. So what does all that math mean? I mean, basically, as unstoppable as the Wrangler Rubicon is, to the point where I even have to wonder, like, is it even too much? I mean, I've done the Rubicon in a stock Wrangler and it was fine. And a Rubicon wouldn't have any trouble doing this. And frankly, this would be great on the Rubicon. Like how much is too much? At this point with all of this torque and these crawl ratios, I basically need 40 inch tires and crazy amounts of long travel to even start approaching the limits of what this power plant can do. So kind of like, why bother? 
I, mean, I don't know the answer to these questions, you guys, but I think we're here. Now we've covered the interior of the Bronco in a bunch of other videos, but there are a couple things I want to point out here. Number one, on the passenger side and on the driver side, but more importantly on the passenger side is a grab handle. So short people like my navigator, Rebecca Donaghy, who has a hard time getting into vehicles because she's of a smaller stature, it's going to be a lot easier to get into this thing. Another thing I like are these set of auxiliary switches up here. So everything is pre-wired in a sense. So when you want to put in lights or you want to put in a winch or whatever, it's going to be a lot easier. For someone who hates wiring, like this is rad. So if you wanna see some features, first of all, uh, we're upside down because we're looking south. So that's why that is that way. Uh, we started here and that is that third set of rocks out there. Then this little archipelago guy is that second set of rocks that is in. And then this tiny little thing right here with that tiny little bump, that is the third set of rocks. And again, if you can tell where we are based on this map, good for you, come on out. All right, road shows in. I want to hear from you. Would you rather have the two door, not as much room, but better breakover angle? Or are you all about that space? And would you go for the four door? Let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe.